Well, that's there. I'm looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> so, he went to work, so that's how I do my whirlpool. Because I added a couple of wine and then a couple of that into my tub. So, it just comes down in front of my emergency chiller. I see you're a double fist drinker. Water on my nose, all right, though. Going with this water. Yeah. So, all the excitement is done yeah. for a little while. <laughs> now we wait. That's one of the problems with brewing is a lot of weight. Oh, yeah, I didn't really think So, basically, we're going to let this hot water sit in here with these grains. Mm -hmm. It's going to extract all the sugars, just like when you make oatmeal. Okay. Um, we'll let that sit for about. Um, 45 minutes and then after that we'll move it into this that's when we start to boil it and add the hops and all the so other well, I'm it out here with this we want to get uh, sugar out of the grains and leave the grains behind oh, okay. and then we move the wort uh, the sugar water which is called wort into here and we'll so boil it, it shoots around and, and then add all the hops and, and other additives to it, to it. Mm -hmm. Um, so all my hops are over there behind these guys. I'm gonna change that out. I've got, uh, I'm only, for this, for this beer we're only gonna do 15 minute editions, and flame out editions, and then dry hop editions, so that's only about a week. Um, so. What temp did you say you're mashing in at? Uh, right now I'm, I'm shooting for about 140, 142. Okay. I'm a little low, which is okay for the style. I'm going for a brewed IPA, which is a really dry beer. Yeah. So yeah, lower temps know, okay as long as I'm dollars. above 120 on fire. <laughs> mm -hmm. So and then I've also got an enzyme that I'll be adding to the fermenter to help break up any of the, the longer chain sugars into a really simple sugar, but the yeast. Yeah, but so this right here is the it's cold liquor tank. So this is 10 barrels, so it's 310 gallons of, of water. It's um, These black lines here run glycol into the unit, which is a food grade antifreeze. Um, there's basically, it's a double wall. So there's water inside, there's a wall. Then there's a chamber, which is where the glycol runs through, and then the outer wall. Um, and that'll run, I can get that down to 35 degrees. <laughs> This is the hot liquor tank. This is a double bat, double size, so it's uh, 20 barrels, so it's 620 gallons. And it's steam jacketed, so it's got the same setup as that, but instead of glycol, steam runs through here to heat it up. On brew day, this is at 180 degrees. <laughs> Watch your step. There doesn't really much going on here. This is a boil kettle, it's about 15, 15 barrels. Um, <clears throat> it's steam jacketed as well, so it skews up just the same way that that is. Got a little smokestack that allows the steam to go out. <clears throat> um, the, this, this is kind of a little bit cone shaped at the bottom, which is where this is. This port is above that cone where it's flat, and then this is a whirlpool arm, so I can actually whirlpool the, the beer towards the end to get all the the hop debris and everything to settle into the center. And then so I'll take it out of here. So you steam to actually heat this up instead of like, uh, you had a little burner out for the... Burner? Right, same thing with both of these. These are both steam generated. So I use steam to boil instead of instead of direct flame. And that's taking you to cool it down with them before you add the yeast? Correct, yeah. And that right behind you is the, the chiller. That little chiller I showed you earlier, that's the same thing but for this setup. And that one comes apart so I can clean it. So I can actually take the plates apart on that one. <laughs> Atmosphere chore. <laughs> this is the platform here. Um, nothing's automated. I have to do it all by hand. Like all of these ports have to be connected with hoses and pumps to move it from one place to another. Uh, this is the mash tun. So this is the stage that we're at right now over there. Um, obviously it's a lot bigger. But it's got the same thing. It's got a grate on the bottom that has very small holes in it that lets the liquid go through but not the grain. Um, it also has a rake. It's got a rake on it so I can mix it with that instead of a, a an oar. <laughs> yeah, so I turn that, I can turn this on, it'll mix it. Um, and it also has several ports on the bottom for extracting the liquid and just the liquid and not the grain. Um, before brew day, all the grain sits up there. I'll, ma I'll crush it. Because um, right now it's all in bags over here on the, our dry storage. <laughs> so this is 
the mill room. So all the grain will get poured into there by hand. It gets crushed. It's got two wheels that roll that crush the grain. And then it goes up that white pipe oh, into the grist case. So it's got a worm gear inside that white pipe that takes the grain up there where it sits until, uh, until brew day. Yeah. Okay, okay. So it's going down through the grains, through the false bottom, through the pump, and then up into here. Dimpy. Uh, but um, this liquid that's recirculating, in a second, is going to go into that. And then I'm going to move it up here. Um, normally, this stand design is designed for two pumps. I'd have another pump so I could run it out of here into here through one pump and then run this water through here to rinse at the same time. I don't have that option because one of the pumps is dead, so I'm gonna move this onto the floor, gravity feed this out of here, and then run more liquid in at the same time. So I try to keep it about an inch of an inch of liquid above the grain bed the whole way through. Does it matter if it's an inch, five inches? Not really. Not right. I mean, the only problem, with like, the, if you get too much, it could create more weight, right. more pressure, which would be more pressure. Mm -hmm. um, so I just try to keep it about an inch throughout the the thing. But depending on your setup, like mine, mine at home, I I fill the thing up and it's fine. Because um, I've got a really good false bottom and. I mean, this one, I'm still not that comfortable with. This is not mine. <laughs> Mine's way better. Because <laughs> I built it. <laughs> so. well, it's coming up real slow. Is that just because of all the grains like, on the bottom? Uh, that's intentional. Okay. I, I've got, see this is very, very, very yeah. open. Okay, yeah. I want it to come down slow so I get a nice, slow, Extraction because as it's coming down, it's pulling sugars with it. So I want it to go slow so it gets all of those sugars. Longship Brewery uh, brew day, or live brew day, I guess. Um, awesome time, great beer. Don't forget also to uh, check out the channel and to uh, also have a home brew and also always have a good time. So I'll catch you all later on the next episode. Thanks for watching.